Here's a great little note from my sister in Christ. And here we go. This is uh, a letter that uh, she has written, which I think is, is very good. So I'm going to read it out. And it's based on something that I said in one of my messages. And she says, you said, I have so many thoughts on so many of these videos and all my thoughts are in alignment with what is being said. That's me. I can see the issues he's talking about so clearly and it's frightening how I wasn't able to see it before. I wrote that. And she writes, I like Kevin. He is very good in explaining concepts and he does not mince words. And he has personal experience with narcissistic abuse. His wife was an overt narcissist though. They are much easier to spot than the coverts. A religious covert narc narcissist appears appearing kind and humble is the worst type and initially impossible to spot. Oh, yeah. A religious covert narcissist appears kind and humble and is the worst type and initially impossible to spot. Now, as I said, I, I don't totally agree that my partner's is a narcissist, although it's stacking up. The evidence is stacking up in a massive way against her. So, so don't feel bad about the fact that you were taken in by this display. This is how the cockatrice seduced Eve. So true. The ultimate narcissist of them all. Azazel. There are several reasons why you and me in my situation were not able to see it. The brain is essentially a biocomputer. Because the brain is of limited capacity, it has some default programs present in the subconscious mind. Um, once again, this worries me when I hear this because it's questioning, uh, not you and not me, but it's questioning God's fundamental uh, creation of a brain with a limited capacity. You know, I always like to believe God created perfection. So is the brain having a limited capacity because it's in a broken world, it's in a broken state, a fallen state. Is it because we as human beings, knowing that we are in a broken world, seek, seek favor with those around us? We seek to be endorsed by everybody so much that we wish to see the good in them so we can get positive strokes as opposed to you know, we, we don't want to be seen to be suspicious of all people all the time because it just makes it very difficult for us. You know, we need to fall back on shortcuts for things. Otherwise, our brains are always thinking, you know, the human brain likes to be lazy. These default programs play an important part in keeping us safe, protecting our circuits from overload. I don't know. Do our circuits ever go into overload. Perhaps human beings are more likely to be lazy. I think human beings are more lazy than anything else when we are overwhelmed by events that threaten our mental stability. And I agree with all of these points, by the way. It's, I'm not attacking the points. I'm saying they're great because it is true. You know, uh, people are overwhelmed by things, especially things that frighten them or scare them. Fear is a very debilitating energy, a, a very debilitating spirit. One of these programs is denial. It takes over to protect us from mental breakdown and keeps us functioning until a time comes when we are able, by and by, to look at the facts and process them in a more constructive manner. And I agree with that. Denial. We are in denial about a lot of things. The denial is the first step in the grieving process after suffering a loss of something or someone who was of great importance to us. And I think that comes with us making a very bad decision up front. If we get married to someone and within a year or two we realize, oh, oh, we suddenly have to fall back into denial, believing that this person is a good person. They're a great person. We're going to keep loving them and we're going to hope that they just get right because we're so committed now. We're so involved in believing in them. The grieving process has been well described and all people who have suffered loss go through the various stage of it until resolution occurs. When Kevin said it isn't love that keeps you stuck in an abusive relationship, he's really lifting the lid of the program called denial. 
the program has served us well to keep us functioning so far. But at some point, it needs to be processed. Your relationship or bond, your relationship or bond with this person ended the moment the mask slipped and you were put down. Yeah, the mask slipped. That's exactly what happened. The mask slipped. I write notes while I talk. And you were put down, humiliated and devalued. I was humiliated and devalued. I've, I've been there from the very beginning. I was humiliated and devalued. And it's so sad. But it's so true. Um, apparently, this happened years and years ago. Yes, up until now, denial has been your friend and has kept you safe. However, it has also created a great deal of cognitive dissonance within you. The denial produced by your subconscious mind and the facts registered by your cognitive mind are incongruent. You know it and it makes you feel very uneasy. Yep. Now people like you with lots of talents and ability, thank you so much, can use this uneasy feeling and channel it into creativity and exploit it for business and other activities. Wow. Okay. I'd love to be able to do that. Uh, all I can do is talk about it at the moment. And it appears you have done that well. However, eventually some event will occur and it all comes crashing down. At this point, you suffer confusion, anxiety, depression, insomnia, loss of drive, loss of interest. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm teeter tottering always on that, which is a bit sad. Now, the other program that exists wants to reestablish equilibrium as best as it knows how. But I've also. By the way, to go back to that statement, I think you're right. And I have become very in the desire to just keep going forward and not letting things bug me. Um, and, it, and it has to come from inside of me. It's got to come from that place where I feel rather positive and happy that this has happened. I, I don't, but I, I have to create that fake feeling. I have to create a fake feeling of I'm happy, this has happened, I'm top of the world, I'm so excited, yay, I can live my life, I can now go about my life as never before, I'm now single, I can do whatever I want. Uh, the truth of it is we can't. We're locked in because um, God doesn't allow you to do whatever you want, you know, because I hate the feelings that I feel when I've done something carnal or I've gone out all out and just had fun you know um, it's terrible it's a very terrible thing I I uh, I can understand why the world at large does not want to know Jesus Christ why they don't want to buy into being a believer or follower of Christ because it comes with a level of accountability and a, a level of stupendous um, you know monkishness that we're all sitting under. We're stoic. You know, we become stoic in our outlook. And stoic in a bad way, not in a good way. Like everything is, you know, we can't do this, can't do that, can't live, can't live. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's a stone in a hard place. You know, the enemy, you don't want to live the way the enemy wants it. But you don't want to, you don't want to live it in this, in this sanitized I can't do much kind of a world because everything you do is potentially a sin. So it's very, very hard, very, very hard way to live. Um, I can also, I can also understand the appeal that Azazel had in getting a third of the angels to fall away from heaven. And I can also understand the appeal that still exists in coming down to earth rather than in living out a holy 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 lifestyle life in heaven i get it i totally get it now the other program that exists wants to re-establish equilibrium as best as it knows how this program will tell you to return to the former situation in which you were relatively stable this is also a self-preservation mechanism or default program your cognitive mind registered all the instances of mental and emotional abuse against you but you do not want to believe them because it hurts too much to consciously admit to yourself, it to yourself. So you push it back into the subconscious and try to prove cognitive mind wrong. That is so powerful. Wow. 
Now the other program that exists wants to re-establish equilibrium. This program will tell you to return to the former situation in which you were relatively stable. True. This is also a self-preservation mechanism or default program. Correct. Your cognitive mind registered all the instances of mental and emotional abuse against you, but you do not want to believe them because it hurts too much. It hurts too much. That's a song. To consciously admit it to yourself, so you push it back into the subconscious. So you inflate all the good aspects of that person to convince yourself that you really love that person. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I really love that person anymore. I, I, I now realize after all of this time and the year before that, that she put me through this incredible pain that that's just not right. She can't possibly love me. If she did, she would never have done this. Never, ever, ever, ever have done this to me. Never, ever. Uh, it shows a selfishness on her part, a desire to hurt me for no reason. And you can hear it. I think you can hear it in my voice. There's still that, that pain in there. And I'm trying to get rid of that pain. I'm trying to completely get rid of that. And the only way I can see myself providing, getting out of that pain situation is completely ignoring her and selfishly, yes, I'm using these words on purpose, um, determining, moving myself, motivating myself into being with another woman as quickly as I can and just really completely destroy whatever it was that she thinks she still had or I had uh, on purpose. Like there's no other way around it because I can't wait for this um, universe, God, I don't know, I don't want to call it God anymore, but for things to come back together because they're not. And if they do, you know, what good is it going to be for me to sit there looking at her while we're mi busy watching a movie and thinking this woman betrayed me, has hurt me, and will probably hurt me again. Um, you know, there'll always be that silent look that I give her knowing that she's not my friend. And, um, and yeah, and did the things that she did. Do you see what I'm saying? And it's and knowing that she's been abominated and she's got abomination running through her body and now, you know, the very act of being physical with her is being monitored and sent back to the beast computer through her. It's like, what? How I can't do it? It's too hard. Now it's like, now there are many reasons that are lumping up against ever coming together with her, which is sad because I could have, this could have been resolved and fixed and brought together. And this is why I keep always saying to God, please, God, get us out of here. Rapture, rapture the human race, the ones that want to be raptured and be out of here. Because as the longer you leave it, it gets to a point where we can't help those who fell for this. And, you know, they had their price and their price was that they fell for it. But again, that's not fair. I don't see this as fair. None of this is fair. I can't see the fairness here. You say to yourself, I do not want to believe I was taken in by a fake persona. No, I want to believe I was right after all and made the right decision when I married her and built a life and family with her. Anything other would be far too painful to admit. So true. So you convince yourself against all evidence to the contrary that you love her. Letting this bond go means you collapse into a black hole. Wow. Wow. So this is the explanation of why you were not able to see it before. It was due to a subconscious protective mechanism. Yeah. Meant to serve you for a season until it comes to a point where you are able to look at it objectively and process the information correctly and resolve the cognitive dissonance. Wow. And it's the same with the Jews living, the Israelites living in Babylon. They were there for a while, quite a while. So long, in fact, that they started to believe it was fine and it was okay until things got really rough and they weren't working and there was pain and there was all kinds of, you know, a scoffery and mockery of the Israelites and discrimination against them until it got so bad that they realized they couldn't live there anymore. And then, yeah, it started to resolve their cognitive dissonance when they said, we got to get out of here. 
and then they were allowed to leave Babylon. But they learnt things and they got value out of being there. Did they? I don't know. Did they? Did they? I don't know. Did they? Or were they just experiencing their their pain? Were they just experiencing punishment? You know, um, God loves to punish. God loves to punish. He really does. I mean, no matter how we see it, and I love God. And I don't know why these thoughts come out when I start to talk about these things, but God does love to punish. He does desire to punish those who don't know him, don't love him, who go about trying to love the world. You can't love this world. You can't love it. God will punish you when you love this world. After this integration has taken place, you will be able to move on with a new outlook on life and renewed energy and a new self-concept, able to see that you are more valuable than lending yourself to emotional abuse and neglect. Wow, that is good. That is good. That is so nice. Oh boy, yeah, I know, I know, I know. And it's so sad. Kevin says, let it go. It isn't love. You just want to hang on to your old self. Wow, that's so good. That's so true. We just want to hold on to our old self. I hope this helps. Please let me know if you have any questions. Love you. Forever yours. Thank you, dear, wonderful, wonderful saint. Um, well, yeah, um, huh, feeling a little bit more low than when I started reading. But I guess that's the beauty of these letters is that they really do add value and they do help me to understand this better. Um, and they do help me move along. I cannot believe how deep the pain was. I can't believe how deep the pain was. How deep my pain was. I can't believe how deep it was.